This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. I've been faithful. God has been faithful. He has exceeded expectation. He has exceeded our thinking. He has done far beyond what we could imagine. I want you to thank him today. I want you to glorify him. He is the excellence of life. He is the beginning of wisdom understanding and revelation in him will find strength in him will find wisdom in him will find understanding he is the fountain of peace he is the fountain of understanding father we thank you for tonight as your word goes forth Great things of the Spirit will be in operation in this place. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. You can take your seat. Hallelujah. Welcome to day 13 of glory and power. Whenever God wants to move you forward, he begins a conversation. Whenever God wants to move your life forward, he starts a conversation. The title of this message is Following God's Plan. Following God's plans for your life. Following God's plans for your life. There is the plan of God for your life. God has plans for different seasons of your life. And the ability to follow those plans is the doorway to living a fulfilled life. God has plans for every season of your life. He has plans. God had an intention behind your creation. He had an intention behind your coming into this planet called it. And his plans are revealed by his spirit. I said the plan of God is revealed by the Spirit of God. If you can successfully cultivate a healthy relationship with God's Spirit, you can flow and follow God's plans. You can flow and follow God's plans. How do we flow? and follow God's plans is by the help of the Holy Spirit. We can flow and follow God's plans. One of the reasons for setback for most people in life is their inability to identify with the plan of God. I said one of the reasons for setback for most people in life is in their inability to identify with the plan or the plans of God. God has plans for your giftings. He has plans for your potential. There is a plan of God concerning your life. If you're truly going to excel, there is the plan of God consigning your life. And making the discovery of this plan is one of your major responsibility. 
making discovery. It, most people are not living in the plan of God for their life. A lot of Christians don't know what is the plan of God. They don't know what God wants them to do with their lives. And that was why I started by saying, whenever God wants to change your life, he starts the conversation. Genesis chapter 12, from verse 1 to 4, God started a conversation with a man called Abraham. Then it was called Abram. He started a conversation with him. And the conversation was to give him direction of his plan for his life. This is what my plan is for your life. One of the ways to a life of victory and dominion is to discover the plans of God and make it your ultimate priority. To discover the plans of God. It, it stop you from being a person who wonders about. The reason people wonder, most people wondering, they, are, they, want, they know they are moving from here to here, there is no stability, is because they have not understood what is the plans of God. When you understand the plans of God, it gives you a sense of direction. When you understand the plans of God, it gives you a sense of direction. One of the things that helped me many years ago was the, the being able to discover the plan of God on time and staying with it. It is one thing to discover the plans of God. It's another thing for you to stay with that plan that God has for your life. You can discover the plan of God, but you're not willing to stay with the plan. When Ruth lost her husband, by the Spirit, she knew that God has a plan. By the Spirit, she knew that God has a plan for her life, and that was the reason why she stayed connected to Naomi. You see, understanding the plan of God for your life will help you to connect with your God-given relationships. There are relationships that God will put in your life for the purpose of his plans. I was talking to somebody today, I said, if you keep money here and keep relationship here, I will take the relationship, not the money. And why is it that? Because relationship is more than money you see the problem with so many people is that they can betray for money they can do anything for money no if you can do anything for money it means you don't understand plan and purpose you don't understand what is the plan of god for your life god has a plan behind your creation you you god was intentional when making you when creating you god was intention that was why the scripture said you're fearfully and wonderfully made god had intention maybe uh, someone may say that my father did not marry my mother my mother had me out of wedlock it doesn't matter however you came into this world god has a plan behind that but however you showed up in this age there was an intentional plan from heaven that was attached to your life and that is why understanding the plan of God is the first step to releasing the greatness in you. Understanding the plan of God for your life is the first step to releasing the greatness in you. When people fail to discover God's plan for their life, they will begin to wonder, do I do this? Should I not do this? Do I go here? Will I not go here? You know, you see them, they wonder because they don't know what his plan is. And let me say this to you. The plan of God is what hosts the will of God. I want to say that again. I said the plan of God is what hosts the will of God. Is the plans that God has for your life that will host his will for your life. It is the plan of God that hosts the will of God. In a lot of people want a better life, a quality life. And like somebody was sharing with me, uh, I was talking to him, I said, your dad is almost 80 years and your dad have done well for himself and 
he's relaxed and we're talking then he made a comment that got my attention he said pastor yes that's a very good one then we're talking about people getting things he said it's not just getting something it is how you got it so somebody can have a car but he stole the car but he has the car somebody can have a car but he defrauded someone else to get the car owning something need to be based on the right foundation and that is why it's important for we to know what is the plan of God for our lives and it is by the spirit of God you begin to connect with the plan of God for your life can I say this to you God has plan for every season of your life he has plans for every season of your life God has plan God has planned for every season. One of the reasons for setback, deficiency, people's inability to rise is that they're in the wrong place. The wrong place is not just location. The wrong place is out of God's plan. I want to say that again. People think, that, oh, if I can just relocate to America, my life will change. Bring American visa right now. Even inside this church, and some of you, I want to go to America. If you're not careful, 85% or 90% of people will put their hand up. Why are you going to America? I beg, I want you to go figure money. That's what is in their mind. And that proves they don't understand purpose. They don't understand purpose. Location is not what determines results direction from the spirit is what determines results in that same America there are those who are homeless don't be fooled there are those in debts there are people that their car was repossessed their house was repossessed there are those that lost their mortgage there are those that have to go to school with loans as they are through with school, they start paying the loan they took by going to school. So America is not a ticket to success. Canada is not a ticket to plan of God for your life. Nothing restores dignity like purpose. Nothing restores dignity like purpose. Nothing puts you on the cutting edge like making discovery of the plans of God. Lord, what will you have me do? That was one of the questions that Saul asked after his conversion. He said, Lord, what will you have me do? Discovering the plan of God for your life is the key to supernatural speed. If you want to speed in life, make any progress, any success, achieve one time, retire on time when you're supposed to retire and have better life and live better life, there is the plan of God. God's provision is locked in his plans. I said God's provision for you is locked in his plan. When you unlock the plan by doing his will, you also unlock the provision. God's provision is more to you than what the eyes can see. Your life is more than the mistakes, the setback, the struggle, the deficiencies, the limitation. And that is why it's important for you to discover what the plans of God is for your life. What is God's plan for your life? To know the plan of God is to start the journey to a better life. To know the plans of God is to start the journey to a better life. The journey to a better life begins with the plans of God. The journey to a better life begins with the plans of God. Let me say this to you. You can be gifted, but the beauty of your gifting is when it connects with God's plans. Hallelujah. You can be gifted. You can be anointed. But the beauty of it is when it connects with 
God's plan. What is the plan of God? Let me just take my life as an example. Many years ago, while I was staying with my parents, I had an intention to go to school very early. I wrote the exams, went to the school I was supposed to get admission. The admission failed. You know, in those days, they published the admission on the walls. You just see names, different uh, faculties or departments, they will paste it on the wall, and people will go and be checking their name. If you see your name, you know you've gotten admission. So I run through the list over and over, check my name was not there. I'm trying to give you an illustration of what it means to connect with the plans of God. Restoration is in God's plans. Kalida Sataka. Librado Seketo Libra Tayababa. I said restoration is found in his plans. If you want to talk about recovering the lost years, when the scripture said he will restore the years the locusts have eaten, is when you connect with his plans. That is when you meet with restoration. That is why it's not everybody that is experiencing restoration. Some people lost that. They lost that completely until they struggle, until they die. There was nothing restored. Restoration is in the plan. It's when you discover the plan and stay with the plan, then he restores because the plan of God promotes his will. I said what? The plans of God promotes his will and God is intentional about his will. God is intentional about his will and God fulfills his will through human vessels. God fulfilled his will through human vessels. So look at what happened. So I got there, checked my name. Nobody, my friends were all shocked. Oh, my name is Art. Oh, my name is just said, My name is Art. Oh, my name is Art. Oh, my name is Art. And everybody was just, <sighs> but my name was not there. Man is like the, the weight of depression and frustration. It hits me there. I was heavy coming back while I was there I heard God said go and preach my word the plan of God is not in, it is not in a mission to make sense to you God is not here to make sense when someone says am I making sense God doesn't make sense. He makes direction. This is the way to go. And when God said this is the way to go, some people in the natural, it doesn't make sense to them. That is why we walk by faith and not by sight. He said, I want you to go and preach my word. <sighs> why not me preach your word inside this campus? This is the right place I should be preaching. He said, no, you are going outside there to preach my word. I left the place. Why am I sharing this experience? The plan of God is superior to your personal ambition. Whatever your personal ambition is, the plan of God is superior to it. The plan of God is superior to suggestion given to you by people or opinion given to you by people or plans being drawn up by people for your life the plan of God is superior to it so I got home and my dad asked me after I said my name did not come out I just went about preaching 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 doing what God wants me to do while I was doing what he asked me to do, after four to five years, God came to my office one day and said, it's time to go back to school. Ah, he said, yes. You have done some of your part of your job. Now you can go back to school and still maintain the job you're doing for me. Do you know I went to invest like a king? Do you know I never look for money going to school? When I was in school, it was in my year one, I got married. 
The plan of God was unfolding out. You see, until you understand his plan, your life has no direction. The value of your life is in discovering God's plan for your life. The value of your life is in discovering God's plan for your life. Until you discover his plan and make it your priority, you will have a wasted life. A wasted life is life that is not lived within the neighborhood of the plans of God. That life is called wasted. His plan, my present pastor, had first class in engineering. Work for an oil firm. A day came, God came to her and said, I called you to preach. They were already running a successful company. Their company was already successful, making progress with the husband. Both of them were engineers. He said, I called you to preach. And the husband has to release her to go into the ministry. Millions of lives has been blessed because the plan of God was pursued. The value of your life is not in your gifts. The value of your life is not in your talent. The value of your life is in the pursuit of God's plans. That's how you're going to value your life is in the pursuit of the plan of God. What is God's plan for my life? God doesn't just want you to wake up in the morning and just live your life, just move from here to here, hustle and live that. Anybody can do that. He doesn't take anything to run around. Anybody can run around from one pillar to the other, can move from here to here, can move from Lagos to Abuja, can move from here to... Anybody can do anything. But there is what is called the plan of God. That is why you find fulfillment. This is why most people have money but they don't have peace. They don't have joy. There is this emptiness in them because until you discover the plan of God, you cannot experience the peace that empowers you to have what is called emotional stability. There is the plan of God. It is by the Spirit of God we we'll discover the plan of God. Do you know the plan of God for your life? Because if you don't discover God's plan for your life, you'll be a stress to others. You'll be a stress, a problem to the next person. You will never be happy. So when you see somebody who is happy, you think that they're talking about you. You get what I'm saying right now? Somebody can be like, <laughs> It's like they're discussing me in that place. They didn't discuss you. <laughs> it's that it's no plan. They have not discovered the plan of God for your life. And that is what makes you live a life of strength when you discover the plan of God for your life. God has plans for your life. I want to say that again. I said God has plans for your life. He has planned great plans for your life. And for these plans to become a reality, then you need to connect with him. Genesis chapter 12. God has plans. Am I glad I followed the plan of God? The answer is yes. Was there challenging situation and circumstances on my way? Yes. The plan of God is not a position free place. It's not a challenge free place. It's not a resistance free place. Just that you discover the plan of God doesn't mean you won't see obstacles, you won't see challenges, you won't see adversity. No. The purpose of the plan is to cultivate the faith to manifest the will of God. Genesis 12. I started this message by saying whenever God wants to change your life, he starts conversation. Don't forget that. Whenever God wants to change your life, he starts a conversation. And the purpose of the conversation is to provide direction, is to provide wisdom, is to provide understanding. Whenever God wants to change your life, he starts a conversation. God wants to talk to you. God wants to talk to you. He said, come, let's reason together. God wants to talk to you. When you look at your life, don't look at your life from the perspective of your inabilities, your struggle, your weakness, and your pain. Look at your life from what the Spirit of God is saying through the Word of God. That's how to look at your life. 
So Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Get thee out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land I will show you. There is a land I want to show you. There is a land I want to show you. And can I say this to you? We follow the plans of God by faith. We follow the plans of God by faith. It is by faith we follow the plans of God. It is by faith we follow the plan of God. It is by faith we stay in the plans of God. By faith we follow the plan. By faith we stay in the plans. By faith we do the plans of God. By faith we follow. By faith we stay. By faith we do. By faith we follow. By faith we stay. By faith we do. And that faith comes by hearing. Romans 10, 17, he said, So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. God has a plan for your life. You can't live your life on your calculation. You have to live your life on his revelations. You can't live your life on your calculation. Oh, my doing like this. Oh, my doing like this. Look at how that put the drum now. Look at how this person they done. You can't do what other people are doing. You have to do what the Spirit of God is leading you into. The key to having God's attention is to pursue His will with passion. If you want His attention, you have to pursue His will with passion. The key to having His attention is to pursue His will with passion. So here we saw in Genesis 12, verse 1. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, Get thee out of your country, from your family, from your father's house, to a land I will show you. There is a land I want to show you. When you are confused, seek God. Seek his plan. Seek him, Lord. What is your plan for my life? What is your plan for my life? What is your plan for this season of my life? There is the plan of God for this season. I don't know who I'm ministering to tonight. There is the plan of God for this season of your life. There is something he wants you to know. There is something he wants you to learn. There is something he wants you to understand. There is something he wants you to do. There is the plan of God for this season of your life. Nothing adds value to life like the plan of God for your life. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing gives your life a value, a true picture, like knowing the plan of God for your life. And here we saw in Genesis 1, verse, Genesis 12, verse 2, he said, I will make you a great nation. This is the plan now. I will make you a great nation. He started by sending him, leave your father's house to a land that will show you. Then when you discover the plan, the promise will be made manifest. When you discover the plan and pursue the plan of God, you will have what is called the manifestation of the promises of God. The promises of God is connected to the plans of God. The promises of God is connected to the plans of God. The promises of God is connected to the plans of God. The things that he wants you to experience is found in his plans. That is why sometimes I used to be amazed with some folks who maybe their friend is going left. They just start following the person going left. Maybe their family member is going right. They start following the person going right. They don't know what the plan of God is. And I had a same could go. Now here, no, 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 no. There is what is called the plan of God for your life. There is what is called the plan. Bring the visa of any great nation before me right now and say, pick it. I won't touch it. I want to find out what God's plan is in my life. I'm not a fool. I want to find that better life is not my focus. The plan of God is my focus. And better life, real better life, is found in God's plans. Better life is not my focus, to have a better life. No, that's not my focus. My focus is the plan of God. Because everything I need for my life is in its plans. If you're in the pursuit of better life, you will do anything to get it. You will compromise values. You will do anything to get a better life. But if you're in pursuit of God's plan, his will becomes your focus. And let me say this to you. 
the will of God makes you rich. Prosperity, provision, abundance is rooted in the will of God. Prosperity, abundance, increase is rooted in the will of God. Prosperity, abundance, plenty, surplus, increase is rooted in the will of God. Is they are all embedded in his will. And he said, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and I will make your name great. I will make your name great. And, and you shall be a blessing. Hallelujah. You shall be a what? A blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. You know, when God is sending you out, he's responsible for your provision, your protection, and your direction. When God is sending you out, he's responsible for what? For your protection, for your provision. When he's sending you out, he's responsible for your protection. He's responsible for your provision. He's also responsible for your direction. God is not irresponsible God. No, he's a, he's a loving father. He's a caring father. And here we saw, he said, and, and you shall be a blessing. Verse 3 said, I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. <laughs> and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Verse 4 said, so Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him. When he heard God, he didn't go back to prayer. He acted the word. Knowing the will of God and trying to find that the same will of God is a waste of time. You know, some people know what they are supposed to do and they say, let me go and pray about it. You already know what you're supposed to do. There is no need to pray about what you already know you're supposed to do. You see a man who doesn't know God. The guy doesn't know God. You don't know God anywhere. And you want to marry him. You don't get pissed now. You see a woman that does not know God. This lady is not after God. She drinks like cats. Drinks. All kinds of alcohol. Drinks sometimes. She will drink and be staggering inside the room. And that's who you want to marry. There are people by marrying them. The grave is closed. The grave is better to be single than to marry them. It's a digression, but a necessary one. As you marry them, you wear their debts. You cannot enjoy life. You will always be in pursuit of peace, but the peace you won't get. That is why somebody may say God does not like divorce, but God does not hate the divorcee. There are cases where we we'll have to separate the wedding, the marriage. Say this marriage is dissolved. It can no longer hold when threats to life. The problem of the church, I'm sorry to say this tonight. Is that we have a lot of hypocrites inside church. A lot. The man is beating this woman. Beating her. Or the woman beating the man. Whichever reverse. Is it when somebody. Died there. Say, ah, say now, wow. This is that don't die. Ah, let's bury her. No. Would separate the will divorce, will, will, will cancel it. We don't want death. You didn't marry to die. You married to live. It's not a death to do your part. It's not death that will do your part. You marry for life. Don't marry for death. It's not for better and for worse. Marry for better life. You were struggling when you were alone. Only you did try so much more they come. When you don't get, you say two will have a better reward for their labor. The next person now join you, you can't sink. Mba no, no, no. Mba no, mba no. Not be so now. Huh? Which one be that one now? When you deal by yourself, you feed by cup. 
drink water. If you buy the Pepsi, they drink. Right then, malt. Yes, these are the malt people. <laughs> I know that. What? I buy malt that for you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and if we buy malt, drink. No, nah, you know if you buy pure water. Mbano. 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 Scripture said two is better. But there is a time when one is better than two. Because you have your peace of mind. There are people that have be- that I have gone for their barrier. If I know what I know, that they will be alive. Ah, wait a minute, that one. If I know what I know now, they will be alive. Ignorance is sending many people to any grave. Religious spirit is sending them to any grave. When that lady that used to sing die in this country, hey now wow, now wow, why no waka come out now? Why no if you waka come out now? Some of them are too go attack them. Some of them are not going to invite them again to sing. Why? Because now she don't commit crime. You are not marrying for death. You are marrying for life. If it is not towards life, you don't need it. Anything that will not add to your life, I said what? You don't need it. Life is key. When God asked Abraham to leave his father's house to a land he will show him. Now let me say this to us. Abraham knowing the will of God didn't go back to seek God for what he had already told him. A man who understands the plan of God will pursue the plan of God passionately, intentionally. You understood the plan of God. The Bible said, he departed as the Lord had spoken to him and he went and the Lord went with him. This is another problem. Oh, amen. I pray you don't go with lots. Amen. Sometimes lots doesn't look like problem. But the problem will start showing up in the future. There are people who are hiding their identity. May Jesus help you know them. I didn't hear you amen very well. They are hiding their identity. You don't know them. They are hiding their identity. You see, it is by the Spirit you know people. It is by the Spirit you know things. It is by the Spirit you do the will of God. It is by the Spirit. You know. And here we saw that Lot went with him and Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haram. 75. This is when many people say that my life is over. This is when many people say that there is nothing good coming out of my life. This is when most people say that there is nothing going to work concerning my life. At 75, the promises of God was in operation. 75 is not dead. 75 is life. At 75, the man begins to go after the plan of God, after the purpose of God, after the will of God, after the plan of God. Can I say this to you tonight? It is the plan of God that adds value to life. That adds value to life. The one thing about the value of life is when we understand the plan of God. It adds value to life. It is by the Spirit, remember, that will discover the plan of God and we pursue the plan of God passionately. What is God's plan for your life? What is God's plan for my life? What is God's plan? Don't live your life without the sense of asking, what is God's plan for my life? Lord, I want to know your will for my life. I want to know what is your will for me. I want to stay with your will for my life. I want to pursue your will for my life. One of the keys to the recovery of roots was to find out what the will of God was for our life. Now, one of the keys to our recovery was to find out what the will of God is for our life. That was one of the keys to the recovery of roots to find out what is the will of God for my life. She didn't allow the death of her husband to be the end of the road for her life. You know, there are people that when there is an obstacle, it ends the possibility of their greatness. Once there is a problem, once there is an obstacle, they abandon, they abandon what God wants them to do. Let me say this to you. Trouble should be seen as a raw material for creating the positive experience you seek. 
I want to say that again. I said trouble should be like a raw material. The challenges of life should be like a raw material. Look at the life of David. Walking with his father. Go and take care of those few sheep. The, few, the, the, the sheep were few. They were, they were not much. There are people who say, can you, can you just do this little job? Uh, are you talking to homie? Who do you think you are? You're, is it me you're giving that kind of thing to do? You don't rise by being arrogant. Don't rise by being arrogant. You rise by the fruit of humility. Take care of the few sheep. He was attending to them. He was taking care of those sheep as if he was taking care of his life. And God saw how he was attending to the sheep. Say, wow, this is the guy I work with. I found myself a king. Hmm. This, guy is, this, guy, this guy knows what he's doing. If you're not faithful in small things, don't expect great things. If you're not faithful in small things, I said, what? Don't expect great things. If you're not faithful in small things, don't expect great things. For great things to come, you have to be faithful in small things. You have to be faithful in small things for great things to come. But we said, he that is not faithful in that which is least is a much will not be committed to him. Small things contains the potential for great things. If you want to do big things, be in the pursuit of small things. Small beginnings are indication of God starting you and helping you to build capacity for great things. Small things, when God gives you small beginnings, He's trying to enlarge your capacity to do more. So that's indeed too small. How much the salary is very small. The one involved is very small. I can't do that kind of job. But look at David taking care of those few sheep. He discovered the plan of God for his life. He was taking care of those few sheep. The lion came, he had victory. The bear came, he had victory. God was training him for great days. A lot of people want great platform, but they despise little beginning. That is why they won't get there. If you want to do great things, you can't despise small things. You can't despise small things. There are things people are despising right now. And because they are despising those things, it will be difficult for them to rise. It's not because they are only curse. Life has principles. He that is not faithful to that which belongs to another man, who will give him his own? David was taking care of those few sheep. The sheep was few. He was attending to them. He was attending. Maybe some of his friends, even in military, Ah, oh boy, you see they take care of your father's sheep. Ah, I'm working for the armies of Israel right now. Ah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking my salary. You're still working for your father. Oh, now wow. Cheer. Ha, now wow. Please be careful of what people are saying when you have discovered the plan of God for your life. Because people can talk you out of the plan of God when they don't see it as something that is meaningful and something that has potential to accelerate your person. Be careful. There are many people that come to me and say, oh, I don't think you're supposed to be doing this. I don't think you're this. And all kinds of things people come to tell me. It is me that know what God called me to do. I don't think you're supposed to do this. I don't think you're supposed to do that. I don't think you're, oh God. Oh. I don't want to talk about that. I know what God called me to do. Romans 8, 14, he said, as many that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. It is you that should know what God asks you to do and you stay with it when the prophet will appear, it will appear to all. You stay with what God called you to do. What God called you to do may not be popular, but it's your way to the top. What God asks you to do may not be popular. You may not even have the people backing you up or supporting you, but can I say this to you? The will of God is the gateway to a life of supernatural increase. The will of God is the gateway to a life of supernatural increase. The will of God. To make the will of God your focus. And David was taking care of those sheep. And God, God today we read Acts 13. If, you, if you're reading Acts 13, you will observe, it was in Acts 13, he said that David is a man after my heart. Man, 
I circled that scripture. I marked it. I, I paused my reading there. I said, a man after God's heart. Why did he say he's a man after his heart? Because he was a man who was willing to step into the plans of God even when it was not a, a something that has value, something that people could look at and say, this has a meaning, taking care of sheep. When other people are in the battlefield, in military, what a job. What a job of taking care of sheep. Nobody will notice you there. It is the job of caught behind the scene. Nobody will notice you. Nobody will see you. Can I say this to you? God will not give you a platform without first giving you preparation. It is preparation that leads to platform. God cannot give you a platform without first giving you preparation. I see a lot of people, they want to come to the front. And sometimes I just say, oh my God, I wish this guy or this lady understand the process. Me, I don't like today succeed, tomorrow you come down. I don't like it. I don't like, I started in one room and then I went to four rooms and then came back to one room. I don't like it. I like stability. I like a life of progress even if the progress is not that much but I want to be stable in progress I don't want to go from 5 to 1 I don't like that and the reason why it happened to most of us sometimes is that there is something they want to show you know when you want to show that you can do this or you can do that that's when your trouble starts don't try to show to nobody. That's why discovering the plan of God is the key. This guy was taking care of this ship. He was not interested in what people were saying about him. You know, a lot of people will be doing what God has not to do. You know, what people are saying, you know, what people are saying, what people are saying. Look at people saying how their life is. Let me tell you how to judge people talking to you. Watch their life. Anybody who want to talk to make you, they check. That's how they check people's life. Somebody talks to people and they look good talk and who they talk. The two. And these are two confused people. People, they talk. What do people go talk? Do they pay bills? What do they do? There are people that they are, their talk doesn't count. They don't add. They just make noise. You don't listen to noisemakers. They, what they say don't count. We're looking for assets. I told somebody, it's either your winning soul or you're bringing money. Yes, it's either your winning soul or if they bring money. Watch me, I'm saying it. People are watching me all over the world. If you're in a local church, it's either your winning soul or you're bringing money or you're doing something that adds value to the vision. If you're not adding value, you're already a liability. If you're not adding to the vision, you're not doing something that can help that work, that can help that organization. You are not supporting. You just sit down and then you look for cheap gossip to run around. You're not useful. We don't count you. You don't matter. People that matter add value. The proof of a person is in contribution. To the degree you're willing to contribute will also reveal your capacity, your person, and what you are. Anybody can talk about what somebody's doing, but it's not everybody that can roll their sleeve and get to the work. Anybody can talk. To talk is cheap. Come and walk it. No wonder I was a pastor. And she was telling me something that a man came and was saying, ah, this roof you are trying to do is taking long. And the man was talking. I said, Pastor, that man is not a real man. If that guy was real, that guy will write you a check for one million pounds. He's not a real guy. The guy is broke. He's a poor man. How dare you look at somebody that have a project that was over close to 2 billion naira to fix something. You know what is 2 billion like? And you can't write a check for a million for just for 1 million USD. It's taking time. There are matters you don't open your mouth and talk. You don't, you don't have grounds to open your mouth because on no account, you're not adding value. When you don't add value, shut up. 
people who don't add value, their seat is what? Shut up. That's their seat. When you add value, then you can talk. You don't add value. How can you come and tell somebody a project that works so much? What, what is still holding this thing now? What is still holding? And you have no written a check. I said, thank God be me when meet. Then I will tell him where to sit. Not be me meet. There are things as you say it, I just give you a reply. I'm not going to wait time, I'm going to just drop one for you. You don't know what somebody's going through to do what they do, and you just sit and say, why they never do this one? You, why can't you fix it? Are you dead? You fix it. The problem is that you turn back and said, I'm taking care of this, I'm taking care of this, I'm going to run this. A man was watching a preacher talking about fundraising in a television show. He called the television show and said, let the man shut up, you pay the money. Let him get that from that place. That's how they do it now. Are you in this meeting today? If you're in this meeting, let me hear a better amen. You don't have right to go and tell somebody, why have you not done this? Why have you not done that? When you are not contributing, when you are not adding, you don't have right. All you have to do is to congratulate. Oh, now they try you. Now they try. Ah, I thank God for the one when I don't do. I thank you now. I want to try you. Thank you. Thank you. When I they try. Thank you. Thank you. You shut up your mouth. You don't say, why this one? You could have, when you, you turn, you could have said, ah, this area, okay, let me, that, that one, how much did it cost? 100,000, I'll give 200,000. That's how they do it. I'm teaching you wisdom. That's how they do it. That's how they do it. That's how they do it. Ha, huh, now this type, when I go by, this type self, don't be the original one. Then they slap people inside church. But some people collect. Nonsense. You don't know what it took them. You know, actually happened in this place. Pastor, we're trying to manage the resources. I went and bought a fairly used one for a particular thing. This was like 10 or 15 years ago. And somebody said, this one is an old one. Because I'm a pastor, doesn't mean I don't have emotions. And you can receive a holy reaction from me. Some of, my, some of my partners can tell you. I have people who are very wealthy and I look at them and say, stop that. Don't try it again. This is the last time I'm warning you. Is that possible? No, sir. Yes, I can tell you. How much you get? You be God. Now you call me. Now God call me. So when people are doing something, you appreciate them. You thank them. You don't know whether that they are launched, they sacrifice, or maybe they are their children's school fees, or maybe they had something to do and they just sacrifice it and just let that thing happen. And they close their mouth and do serving God. And then somebody came and said, That one was not original. How dare you? Allow them to enjoy their inferiority in the boat. Allow them to enjoy what they bought that is inferior. You can't tell them. Ah, that your clothes have now wax. They don't invite you. Just get involved. Jump on people's skates. Jump on people's things. You just stay and you calculate people. When people are inventing things, somebody said, Why? Many Nigerians are sitting down talking about people's marriage. Somebody brought a thread. And over close to more, more than 100 million downloads. While we are talking about, hey, this one they divorce, this one they do. No vision. See, see, when I look at some young people, I'm going to say, Jesus. I'm going to say, Jesus. What a life. What a life. All you sit down to do is just to talk about somebody's marriage. Just talk about what people are going through in their house. No vision. When somebody just brought out an app that in the past more than 20 hours to, to 50 hours, more than 100 million downloads and money is reading in their account. And your own to sit down to look for people where they quarrel. We go easily go gossip. My friend, you lost your mind. 
get a vision add value to your life the beauty of life is in value the beauty of life is in value the beauty of life is in value my job is not to know what the next guy is doing my job is to pursue my purpose with passion whatever the guy does is his life people do their life how they want to do their life I want to do my life based on purpose so when you see somebody doing something you go and appreciate them thank you for the one way you don't do I am grateful I am thankful I, I, I came with your heart of gratitude. You don't look for one area. You will make one command. One, you know, there are people who always want to just drop one sentence somewhere and just kill them. Zeal. That's not a good life. That's not a good life. Applaud people. Celebrate what they have done. Celebrate their strength. Celebrate what they're able to do for you. Celebrate how they were able to help you. Thank them for what they're able to help you. That is how you come into manifestation of the plans of God. Because one of the ways God fulfills his plan is to put you in relationship that will enable you to pursue that plan and fulfill it. And those relationships are not perfect relationships. There are people with different deficiencies. And also there are people with deficiency and strength. So connect with their strength and don't magnify their deficiency. That's a wise leader. That's wise thinking. How do I get this done? How do I achieve this vision? How do I get this done? Whatever you receive, you're thankful, you're grateful. You know, there are people who continue to pursue excellence, but they don't consider what it takes to get there. Sometimes it costs a lot, a lot. Sometimes somebody's giving you everything and he never told you, he gave you everything. Just because he wants you to have a smile on your face. You don't know. Give somebody 2,000 one time. And they went and told that boy, now 2,000 pastor give me. That 2,000 was money we wanted to buy gas in our house to cook. 2,000. And as we give the person, we couldn't cook that day. But the person did not understand. The news is that it was 2,000 naira pastor gave. They didn't know what it was a sacrifice. Sometimes people give you things that was the only thing they have. Somebody can be rich, but at that point, you didn't have money. Somebody can be wealthy, but at that point, he gave you 500 naira, he gave you 200 naira. He said, Not 200, when you give me, it's on the money. It's on the money. At that point, you didn't have it. Instead of being grateful, you become offended. A man of the spirit live a life of gratitude. Gratitude is the oxygen of relationship. For any relationship to last, gratitude. I'm grateful for that hundred naira you give to me. I am thankful for that one thousand naira you give to me. I, I am grateful for that thing you send across to me. I just want to say a very big thank you. I just want to say a very, very big thank you to you. You don't know how I feel. I was at my low moment when you gave me that thing. I want to say a very big thank you. And let me say this to you. If you're full of gratitude, the right people will be around you. If you're full of gratitude, the right people will be around you. When you people meet you as a person, add value to their life. Even if you can't give them money, give them service. Even if you can't give them money, I said what? I said give them service. You can't give them money. Give them service. Help them. What can I do for you? Can I cut the grass? Can I wash the car? Can I help you in this area? Can I support you with this? Can I help you with this or that? I didn't value brings you to the front. I didn't value builds strong bonds. I didn't value helps you achieve more. When you add value to a person, God is sending another person to add value to you. It is in adding value we make difference in life. And when you understand the plan of God, one of his plans is to add value is to add value not to make comment ah this church self there they help somebody this church self you know it's just a good church there they help somebody or there they help somebody this church you who you don't help you know anytime you're demanding something from an organization or from somebody first demand it from yourself anybody hear me today are you hearing what i'm saying right now eh? they need to follow somebody up who you don't follow up since you come to this church, who have you followed up? Ah, they didn't even show care. 
you, who do you show care to? He said, be not deceived that God is no more. That whatsoever man soweth, that's what he's going to reap. You don't show up when people have meetings, when things are going on, service will close, you carry back, share. You won't ask, how did that service go? Uh, 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 this meeting will go on for these 40 days. How is Pastor, Pastor how are you managing with it yourself? Pastor, how are you even coping with all of this? Some people don't ask. Blah, blah, blah. They don't send. They don't ask. As the service closes, they're gone. I need the blessing, I need the blessing, I must prosper. Yes, you prosper. That's what we're praying for you. But sometimes you try to find out how are this going on? This building project that is going on, I was still there working at, at the last floor. What are things going on? What, what, are, what are things going on, Pastor? Some people don't care. When you live a life of you don't care, you have just sown a seed where you can't be cared for. You show care. You show concern. The proof that you have described the plan of God is that you care for others. You care for what God is doing. You care for his plan. How do we achieve this? I don't have too much, but what I have is 200 naira. 200 naira may buy one nail. Two or three nails. Eh? Do you know true? Two, come, two, come, 200 naira can buy three nails. That's what I have. I don't have much, but what I have is just uh, all... I can buy water. That's what I have. If you have a vision and you find yourself in a vision, pursue that vision in a such a way that your vision will receive the same energy you give to that vision you are part of. <laughs> this one for wise people, not drop down. <laughs> if you find yourself in a vision, Pursue that vision with a high energy. That your own vision, whatever you want to do, you will have people coming with the same level of energy to invest. When I lost my brother last year, we needed to do a house in the village. There were people that came to work for me that I don't know them. Carpenters, bricklayers, some of them have to wait for weeks before I can pay them. I've not seen them before. But I just noticed that they were helping, um, I can tell you, both welders and all kinds of skillful men, they were working in that site every day. Wow. Where were they coming from? My dad said, these guys are so helpful. They, they were working, they were, they were doing things. I was so in it in discovery. Discovery has a challenge in one area. I put my resources. There is matter going on here. I put my resources. So when it came to my own, you know, God took a sense. He has a sense of humor too. He said, No, faith man, I will send you to help you all. Because when his will becomes your thinking, your personal life becomes his agenda. I said, When the will of God becomes your thinking, your own personal life becomes his own agenda. When he's real, the things that matter to God. Let me tell you how to do life and make life work for you. Do his things with passion and yours will flow with that struggle. Do the things that matter to God with passion and yours. Lekete brandes kantani mragamba. Yours will flow with a struggle. Do the things that matter to him. Somebody can even be making mockery of you. Ah, every time you deserve God. Every time you're committed to the things of God. Every time you are. Yes, be committed. Be committed. Commitments and investments. And there is a result for being committed. Commitment is an event. I've never seen someone who is committed to the things that matters to God. There are those that will even come and sow the seed of discouragement. Ah, you say, if they walk too much, why they carry that church for your head? If they walk too much, the way they come out, they come out for you. If there are people who just go about, all they do is to sow wrong seed. And let me say this to you when you're sowing wrong seed in somebody's vision, your vision will be a, will reap the harvest. <laughs> <laughs> the harvest of that in your sowing, your own personal vision. You're going to wonder how am I reaping this kind of harvest in this business I started, in this company I started, in this I started. It was the same seed you were sowing in somebody else's vision. The harvest of every seed 
that someone shows in a vision, he or she will have the vision. They have that should be meeting them there. That is why when I meet with people, I want to support them. When I go anywhere, I want to add value. We go to somewhere. I was to go for a meeting. I said, ah, we need to get some money. Uh, uh, we need to sow some seed. We need to do this. So we need to do that. So I'm thinking what I will do. How are we going to do this one? How are we going to do this one? How much are we giving for this? How much are we going to give for this? That's, that was what I was thinking about. That was what's in my mind. What can we give? How are we going to support them? How are we going to stand with them? That's what I was thinking about. Because as long as I'm thinking that way, somebody will be somewhere else thinking that way for my own life my own dream, my own vision. Can I say this to you? The energy you send out is coming back. So watch it. The energy you send out, if you're the kind of person, you discourages others from serving in a vision, from helping a vision. You are creating an atmosphere of a life of discouragement. No! Be an inspiration. Sister, put more effort. Brother, put more effort. Be a blessing. Support in this area. Support in that area. When God gives you an opportunity to serve, he has given you the privilege horizon. When God gives you an opportunity to serve, he has given you a privilege for rising. The privilege for rising is connected to the opportunity to serve. How do I serve? What can we do? Look at our brother. Sometimes he will leave his job and be working for church. Leave his job. And I know that a reward is coming for that lifestyle. Because somebody in UX has worked for me for two years. Opportunity where he got a job that will pay him $5,000 every two weeks. But when he checked what he was doing for ministry and for me, he said, Apostle, I don't think, but if I take this job, it's going to affect a lot of things we're doing. $5,000 every two weeks. In a month, is 10000 USD. And Tony's is back. See, another person with 50000 naira. The way they go, don't forget you. Eh? As if they talk, they don't reach a Lagos bus stop. Before you go finish talking, they're in Eleme Junction. For 50000 but somebody has had the opportunity of $10,000 $10, as for exchange rate of last week. Some places they were doing 700. 700 times 10,000. And the person said, what I do for ministry? If I take this job now, so many things will be hotted. And we are at the peak of doing a lot of things around the nations. Let me just pay more attention. And Jesus came for the guy. Jesus came for the guy. Jesus came for the guy. As I'm talking to you, the guy bought a house that was over 300 US, 300,000 dollars. When he was telling me how God provided for that house, and I said, Only Jairi can do this for you. Only Jairi can. There is a service and a commitment you give to the kingdom. There is how you pour yourself out. He said, In blessing, in multiplying. How much? That, that, how did you think that the heavens opened over Abraham? You think it was ordinary? No! The man touched the father somewhere. The father started talking. He said, you, you, eh? In blessing, you go see him all. In multiplying, there is how you commit yourself to the things of God. Your friend may not be coming. Your friend may have an attitude towards ministry. I just come when I want to come. If, when I'm free, I come. If I'm not free, I won't be able to come. I'm busy. My schedule is busy. And when they tell me they're busy, and I look at what they're doing, I say, try. I wish they need God to help them. I don't feel for them. Busy for 10,000 naira. Busy for 20,000 naira. That's what they're busy for. Just look at myself. Do you know that Jairi, Malika Tabaya, Meleke, Brekoto, Brekrasaka, Retebo Shakoto, Basakadamba, Jairi, 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 can change your financial destiny. He's the one that gives ideas that cause words to rain down. He's the one that opens doors. I've had family members who have worked for years. For years, years of work, work, work. What's it go? Then they work. Then they work. One of them I was talking to him. All these years of work. 
except the Lord. <laughs> Are you in this service here today? Who is hearing me here today? Except the Lord builds the house. If you like, wake up 5 a.m. and come back 10 p.m. Wake up 5 a.m. Come back 10 p.m. for 30 years. I was telling somebody, see that you go God's way. Or if you go Juju way. Eh? There has to be a force that will help you succeed. It's either God or the devil. Is somebody heard what I'm saying right now? Devil is not the opposite of God, though. Is somebody heard what I'm saying? But I'm talking about spiritual forces. And the person tell me, Pastor, there are people who even did some Juju, did not work too. <laughs> I said, that's good, my boy. <laughs> There's some people did you know well. <laughs> some people went to somewhere they flogged them, they were naked, they robbed, they, they even kill human they poured the blood. They went to the place, they came back broke. Right now, as I'm talking to you, some demons are fighting them. Some of them are now mad, they are in the streets. Oh, you now they have lost it. Except the Lord builds the house. He said, we shall prove all things. That you prosper and be in good health. Even what? As your soul prosper it. Anything that has to do with God, put your hand there. You can't give money. Give service. Give your time. Make inquiry. Try to find out. Is there anything I can pray for? I may not have money to give, but I can pray. I can pray for what you're doing. I can pray for the vision. How many of you pray for this church? How many people wake up every day praying for church? Praying for pastor? Praying for the ministry? How many people wake up praying? I can't give money, but I can pray. I can't give money, but every Saturday I will come out here and cut the grasses and take care of things. That's the least I can do. I can't give money, but I can bring all the, uh, the toiletries, things that they will use for taking care of things here. I'll, I'll, I'll just give that. This is what I can do. There is always something you can do if you decide to do something. There is always something you can do if you decide to do something. There is always something. How much is one toilet to buy now? Some hundred naira. Eh, even you, you can buy. Some of you that are young people there, you can buy. He said every week, I believe God for 100 naira. I will buy one sushi and go and drop it there. Push use it. I will buy soap. I will go and drop it there. They should wash their hands when they are true. You don't, have, you don't need to have a job. Somebody can come and just dash you 500 naira, 200 naira. Say, ah, this is my seed though. I will buy some toilet trip. I'll drop it there. That's how you come into wealth. How do you think people come into abundance? They start small, small, 50 naira. 20 naira seed, 10 naira, 5 naira. They start gradually. There is something they are doing. Ah, people, I need to buy sweet. Oh. Children used to come to Juran Church. Every Sunday, I will, I will buy sweet. Two packets. How much is sweet? So, my 200 naira. He said, every, every, every Sunday, I will buy that. I will be supplying to the children's church to make sure the children have sweet as they will not stress pastor. They, don't, they will go and drop the sweet for them there. I didn't hear better in them. Now, talk to me, somebody. Uh -huh. We are not here for joke today. I'm giving it to you the way it's supposed to be. Amen. You buy the sweet come. Yesterday, my friends come and said, even men of God used to ask for sweets. Say, ah, that your sweet day. Yes. We collect the sweets. So you now buy sweet too for men of God. There's something I learned from Pastor C. Oh, oh, what a pastor. When you bring children, if you come like a family, come with children. They have, they have something for children. You know, can we become a church of hospital? Where people could find something. And every one of us can contribute to that. What happened on Sunday morning? You come to church with two crates of mineral. And people are coming in and say this for you. What happened? You come to church with sweets. Papa, you come to church with bread. Hmm. Pastor, don't go. Don't move to that point. Bread is now 
Holy Ghost. <laughs> but don't bother. My God will supply all your needs according to his riches and his glory. Hmm. Pastor, understand sweet. Understand toiletries. But when you move the bread, I have a concern. Pastor, how many bread will I buy? <laughs> how many people am I going to buy bread for? <laughs> I didn't say butter. That is another service matter. We have service that so we buy bread on there. <laughs> but not to the bread. Ah, glory to God. Somebody should show some consign. Somebody should show some love. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. See somebody is coming to church and they are not well dressed. You have some good clothes. You say, see, it's not only money. Yo. It's not only money. You look for some people by the spirit you let do. Because there are people you give them fairly used clothes. Oh, oh me. Kai. Hey, church, please, let me address something. Please, listen to me. Everybody, is your ear open? Everybody, hear me. Listen, listen, listen very well. When our children were coming up, listen carefully. I have this partner, this family, and they have grandchildren. And when I got to their place, they brought bags of clothes. I was so grateful. What is the joy of repeating one cloth two times? If you have many, it has the same things. Somebody gave you a fairly used cloth for your children. So my children cannot wear this rubbish. Yeah. And the same people will go to God. Send me my destiny helper. Oh, Jehovah Jireh. Who oh, Jehovah Jireh? Destiny helper from where to where? The help you just got, you throw it away. How do you think that this thing? Come, hi. What gave you the notion or this mentality that God cannot send fairly used clothes to you? Uh, Apostle, you know you need preach prosperity. God does. God used to send car. Some of you are praying for car. Somebody can come now and give you a car as used for five years. You want to tell me you know collect them? Somebody say, give me the key quick. Quickly. <laughs> you get what I'm saying right now. So God is able to make all grace. So people can come. There are men of God, and I'm going to give them a fairly useful plan. They collected it. How this grateful attitude. And I sit in a room, Christian, sorry to say this. And when you're like that, let me tell you, it will be difficult to get help. This is why most people are stunned. This is why many people, they have to beg to actually get. Because they don't know how to receive. How to receive. People have given me fairly you should. I receive it with a gratitude. Why? Because I don't even know how, what they went through to release it. Maybe it was their last seed. And then you come and begin to despise it and do like this inside church. What did they do? What are you doing? You honor it. You receive it with thanksgiving. Brother Copeland said that somebody gave me a fairly used watch. Can I Copeland? And when he opened it, he saw it was a fairly. He started praying for the man. It was precious. Precious. To receive with your gratitude. And when you begin to receive with your heart, let me tell you this. Once you begin to receive with a grateful heart, God begins to improve things. This is how it works. Some people say they, they want to see the help of God. As you begin to receive with a grateful heart, they start improving things. So, ah, I like the way this person is, is improving things. Eh? With a grateful heart. Smart, come. Uh, come, smart. Uh, come. Uh, I'm led by the Spirit to put this one in your hand. Amen. Uh, by the Holy Ghost. From the spirit, yeah. from the spirit, hallelujah, amen. And God will turn your story around in this service. I prophesy to you, you will be at the right place at the right time with the right people receiving the right result. Rise up and say, Father, from today, whatever you are sending my way, I receive. Uh, somebody lift up your voice and begin to talk to God, uh, Father, from today, whatever you are sending. My way, I receive with a grateful heart. Leborebo shata la baba, lobo sheka tababa. I receive with a grateful heart. I receive with a heart of thanksgiving. 
a heart of thanksgiving I receive and let me say this to you once you are grateful the father begin to send you help us the father begin to send you help us I receive with a grateful heart I receive with a grateful heart somebody can come and they just give you a jewelry receive with a grateful heart and thank God for what they gave I receive with a grateful heart I receive with a heart of thanksgiving I receive with a grateful heart church listen to this the other day we got a phone call from a pastor and he was thanking me and then said take the phone to your wife he said I want to thank you both for the clothes you have been sending to help me dress to go to church ministry ministry need clothes I don't know what they get what I'm saying as long as you're standing before people in the public and there are people that God will send to send something your way you will say let me say this to you pride will stop the harvest from coming church listen to me as you see me as your pastor right now I am a receiver I receive with thanksgiving I receive with a grateful heart is somebody hearing what I'm saying right now and when you begin to receive with an attitude of gratitude more doors begins to open more doors begin to open lift up your voice tonight and say Lord I'll be grateful for the things you're sending my way don't have an attitude of despising gifts despising what God is sending your way no it's, it, the reason why it was sent to you because God is adding to you God is adding to you He's adding to you it may not look like something that look that what you're expecting but he has just added to you thank him for it uh, receive it with gratitude uh, and bless Said, Thank you, Father. I'm grateful for the things you give. I'm grateful for the doors you open. I'm grateful. I am thankful. Don't despise gifts. Don't despise the things that God is sending. He has a reason for sending that. Father, I thank you. Lipando lobo shakala baba. Rendo bo shakata. Lebro shakababa. Listen to this testimony many years ago my friend came back from the UK went to preach and he said apostle I bought you a watch he gave me the watch as I saw the watch I said I'm going to wear this one and taking it to my man of God let my man of God help me wear this one I was so grateful that he gave me something I can exchange in the spirit friend God will send people your way receive with your heart of thanksgiving your pastor is ministering to you, pouring to you. Receive with the heart of thanksgiving. God, thank you for giving me a pastor to feed me with the word. If you're not grateful for what you have received, you're going to lose it. Anything you're not thankful for is what you're about to lose. I want you to pray tonight. I say, Lord, from this day forward, I will never despise anything you will bring my way. Anything you will give me opportunity to receive. I will never. I will receive it with a grateful heart. I receive with a great heart in the name of Jesus. There are things that God will let people to bring into your heart, and some of them tell you this one is a seed. <laughs> because it will start something for your life. It will start something for your destiny. I'm going to begin to pray. Say, Lord, help me to recognize my seed and from my fruit. Help me to know the difference between my seed and my fruit. Somebody pray the Holy Ghost right now. Some things will come, they will be seed. Some will come into the fruit. In the name of Jesus. This prayer point, Lord, help me to place value on my covenant and destiny relationship. All relationships are not at the same level. There are people sent to help you rise. Be sensitive. There are people sent to help you build. There are people sent to help you make progress. Is somebody here? I don't want to say that. Most of them, it's not money they will give to you. Some will pray for you. Some will give you counsel. 
some will bring finances some will open door for you but the prayer tonight is that lord help me to connect help me to know help me to connect help me to understand that help me to connect help me to understand that in the name of jesus to know the relationship you are putting my life i receive understanding now to water to water to water in the name of Jesus listen to me church there are people who actually add to life they add believe me when they come your vision turns around when they come they make contributions that are advance your purpose when they come they take the vision like it's their personal business. We're going to pray tonight for this ministry. That every passionate about this ministry, every one of us, you, you can come to discovery, but you're not passionate about discovery. You can come to this ministry, but you know that your heart. You just they come for coming sick. But when you are passionate about it, you want to support, you want to encourage, you want to pursue the unity of the brethren, you want to help. You, you don't sit by one side and you're tearing the house apart. No, you want to build, you want to add. How do we add? How do we contribute? How do we work together? Your always your conversation is always tending towards building, protecting, pushing forward, bringing more people, reaching life. That's what you're always saying. You always want to be that. You're always thinking about the well-being of the house of God. And let me say this to you. If that is the kind of mindset you have, brethren, you will reap your harvest right inside this place. I want you to pray right now. Say, Lord, I receive the wisdom to build with my man of God. I receive the wisdom to stand by a prophetic man, to stand by my man of God in this season, to stand with the vision, to stand with the apostle of this house. I receive the grace. My Lord, help me to connect properly. Lord, help me to connect with what is going on. Lord, help me to give my time, my resources, my service uh, to ensure that this vision be able to get to its destination. I receive the passion to stand with my man of God in good time and every season. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Finally, I want you to pray for yourself. What do you want God to do for you? How do you want God to do it for you? Lift up your voice. Pray for yourself. Lift up your voice. Pray for yourself right now. We're closing the next three minutes. Pray for yourself right now. Let come about. What do you want God to do for you? What do you want God to do through you? How do you want God to help you? What do you want to see? Is it your marriage? Is it your business? Is it your finance? Is it your health? Is it your job? Reach out in faith and receive from the Spirit of God. Reach out. Reach out in faith. 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 And God, my yakata baba baba baba, lebo 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 lebo, rakata rabo sheka baba baba, rende bo shekanda la baba, rikanda baba. Lift up your voice and prophesy. Lord, use me in this house. Lord, use me to be a builder. Lord, use me to be a preacher. Lord, use me to add value to the vision. Lord, use me to inspire other brethren that we can work together, that we can achieve great goals. Le kata rebo shaka baba. Lord, use me to be an answer. Lo mande bo le baba baba. Lord use me meet needs from here touch destinies touch lives thank you Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus finally let's pray for this community that people in this community will begin to receive the word of God
and they'll begin to walk in the light of God's word. Their eyes of understanding will be enlightened and we'll pray that God will meet their needs. I want you to lift up this community that we are here in having this ministry. I want us to pray for this community. That people will begin to, their eyes of understanding will be enlightened. We will pray for them. We'll pray for their families. We'll pray for their children. Lift up the people in this community. Pray for the people in this community that their life will make progress. That they will grow. It's only better results. So good things that we'll be hearing here. We'll also pray for salvation of souls. Uh, for people to come to the knowledge of God's word. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I thank you for everyone here tonight. I pray that you're anointing. I pray that your unction, I pray that your power rest upon them, that they will continue to have supernatural results. I decree and I declare that you people will walk in the light of God's word. I pray for everyone here tonight that the word of God you have heard will produce a common result. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.